Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So Monday means it's Modern Monday here in Instant Deck Tech land, and we have some Ultra Spice to check out today. This is Grixis Unearthed, comes to us from Kenji Wannabe, who dug it to a top 8 finish at a small Japanese tournament. So congrats to Kenji on a super cool deck. A quick reminder before we break down Grixis Unearthed for Modern. If you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click that like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot of being made into videos next week. So Grixis on Earth is a graveyard deck, but we're based around filling our graveyard at warp speed for some really unique payoffs. To really understand it, we just gotta kinda walk through the process step by step. While it's sort of dredge-esque, it's really kind of a combo deck as well. So step one for Grixis on Earth is get cards in the graveyard. We wanna get cards in our graveyard so desperately, we're willing to play Glimpsy Unthinkable, a card that you pretty much only see in mill decks to target the opponent because it's just two mana dump five cards from your library into your graveyard it's not a creature it can't block it doesn't draw you a card it costs you a card that's how bad we just want to get things in our graveyard the end goal of our deck is to get not only as many creatures as possible in our graveyard but we want as many black creatures as possible in our graveyard and glimpsy unthinkable gets the process started by dumping a full sixth of our deck into our graveyard for just two mana heater and crab adds up over the course of a few turns milling three at a time six at a time if we have a fetch land so another great way just to stock our graveyard at warp speed we have a couple of interesting backup plans as well so rotting rats and phantasmagorian are ways that we can get cards in our graveyard but there's a bit of a twist here heater and crab glipsy unthinkable are putting cards from our library into our graveyard rotting rats and phantasmagorian let us put cards from our hand into our graveyard because we discard a card both players discard a card with rotting rats phantasmagorian Phantasmagorian, we're never going to cast it. We want it for the discard three, return it from your graveyard to your hand ability so we can get it into our graveyard, maybe from a Hedron Crab, Glimpsy Unthinkable. So one of the risks of this deck is that we'll have our big finishers and combo pieces stuck in hand because we naturally draw them. And having Rotting Rats and Phantasmagorian, make sure that's not a problem. So we can get the cards from our hand into our graveyard as well as the cards from our library. So step one for the deck, get cards in our graveyard as fast as possible. Getting cards in our graveyard lets us get even more cards cards in our graveyard thanks to some dredge cards so we're not a dredge deck in the typical sense but we are using dredge cards because they're really good ways to get more cards in our graveyard four stinkweed imps let us dredge five so we get it in the graveyard from our crabs from our glimpsy unthinkable and then instead of drawing a card we just mill five cards get back stinkweed imp hopefully discard it again to a rotting rats or something keep dredging keep dredging getting more and more cards in our graveyard life from the loam dredges three also part of our backup finishing plan that we'll talk about in a bit Dark Blast, a removal spell, also lets us dredge a bit. If just dredging these cards once a turn isn't enough, we even have a bunch of cycling cards. So the cycling cards are basically just additional dredges each turn. Because dredge triggers whenever we draw a card, cycling draws us a card. So for one mana, Horde the Broken's Land is just dredge again. Get five more cards in our graveyard from our Sink Weedim, for example. Street Wraith, free trigger to dredge again, costing us just two life. Monstrous Carabid, same thing. They're also all black creatures that go to our graveyard cheaply and easily. So you're probably wondering, why are we doing all this work? Why are we so concerned with getting black creatures into our graveyard? What is going on with this deck? And the answer is, we are a Crypt of Agadium deck. This is our big finisher. So Crypt of Agadium, a really powerful but very underused land. So enters tapped, adds a black mana, but the big deal here for our deck is you can pay two and tap it, and you're able to add a black mana for each black creature card in your graveyard. So our goal goal is going to be to have our crypt tapping for like 10 mana, maybe even more than 10 mana. We want to be able to make around 20 mana in a single turn, or even more than that, which allows us to win the game in a really cool way. So getting to 20 mana with a single Crypt of Agadium activation isn't always that easy, although it's worth pointing out, Crypt not legendary, so we can't have multiples, but we have a bit of a trick here. We have one copy of Fate Stitcher, so as we're filling our graveyard, we'll eventually mill over our Fate Stitcher. We can unearth the Fate Stitcher. Use Fate Stitcher to untap our Crypt of Agadium, which either allows us to double up our mana, we just activate Crypt, then we untap it to activate it again to add even more mana, or it lets us play a Crypt from our hand, it comes into play 
untapped, that would normally be a problem because wait another turn, but Face Ninja lets us untap it and combo off right away. So we do all this work, get all these things in our graveyard, eventually add a ton of mana. What's our payoff? The payoff for our deck is so sweet and so unique. We are looking to kill people with unearthed creatures. So we talked about rotting rats before. It's kind of part of the plan, but the big payoffs are Sidax Respector and Extractor Demon. So these are big flying threats that come back from the graveyard really cheaply. So Spectre, two mana on Earth cost. So we pay two mana, it comes back into play with haste, it gets exiled at the end of turn. We don't really care because we're winning that turn. Extractor Demon on Earth for three mana, but gives us a five, five flyer. So what we're trying to set up is a turn where we spend 20 mana, um, at least unearthing all of our stuff, which is enough to get back all four copies of Extractor Demon. Also get back all four copies of Spectre, which gives us 32 hasty flying power to kill our opponent out of nowhere. If we're worried about our opponent having cards in hand, we can get back all of our Rotting Rats as well to make sure our opponent's empty-handed, doesn't have a Cryptic to tap down our team. So that is the payoff for all this work. Untapping our Crypt to make tons of mana so we can get back four copies of Extractor Demon along with some Spectres in the same turn and beat our opponent down in the air. Our backup plan is also pretty sweet. So if for some reason we can't win with Extractor Demons, what we want to set up is milling over our Worm Harvest. Then we use Life from Malone to get back three cards three land cards from our graveyard. Then, using our crypt mana, we can discard those lands and cast Worm Harvest three times. Probably going to be making about 10 Worm Tokens each time. That's 31 ones, all in the same turn. So we just attack with them, kill our opponent that way. So a super sweet backup plan as well with Worm Harvest. Otherwise, wrapping up the not land cards, Gnaw to the Bone just gains us tons of life. Mill it over, going to gain us eh, 20 40 life. Enough that we don't really have to worry about losing to aggro decks. Buys us time to set things up. Raven's Crime, a discard spell we can cast from our graveyard. The rest of the mana base, we already talked about the crypts. Missy Rainforest, Verdant Catacombs, some fetch lands to find a bunch of different colors of shock lands and some basic lands. As far as the sideboard is concerned, Nature's Claim is a big one. Nature's Claim makes sure we can kill a rest in peace, kill a ley line of the void. Stuff that shuts down our graveyard. We really want our graveyard to be active. In theory, we can win just by casting our unearthed creatures Creatures, but we're at our best when we're stocking our graveyard, getting them back for their cheap, cheap on Earth cost. Dark Blast and Shriek Maw give us some more removal. Shriek Maw also another black creature that goes in the graveyard once we evoke it and kill something. Fairy Macabre, kind of the same thing. We discard it, get some cards out of our opponent's graveyard, so it gives us a graveyard hate spell that's also another black creature in the graveyard to power up our crypt. And then another nod to the bone for aggro. Finally, Speaking of black creatures, we can also just bring in the full four pack rats. So if our opponent's taking out their fatal pushes, thinking we're winning with this weird combo turn where their fatal pushes don't do anything, we can just slam a pack rat on turn two, start discarding cards which we want to do anyway, make a huge board full of rats, and win the game that way. So anyway, that's been our instant deck tech for today. Grixis on Earth for Modern. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.